Hello everybody, this is Diloop and welcome back to my Factorio tutorial series. We're going to be continuing our circuit network stuff today. This episode is going to be a little bit less structured because I want to show you how to build a smarter factory and a control center for your base. Uh, so I've set up here a couple of factories. One is making yellow belt that is getting inserted into this machine, which is getting inserted into another passive provider chest for red belt. Uh, so typically this is how you would set up your factory. You would have a belt of resources coming in. You would set it up to passive provider chests so that you can request them from your logistics network. But we want to make it more smart so that instead of limiting this chest to how many stacks we want, we can set an exact number as well as recycle the old belt. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need is a couple of constant combinators. And then two arithmetic combinators. We'll explain what the second one does in a minute. Uh, in the first arithmetic combinator, I'm going to go ahead and click it here. Uh, it seems my one of my settings is wrong. No, it's not. It's good. Okay, in this first arithmetic combinator, we're going to take the input of each, and then we're going to multiply it by negative one, and click set. Then we're going to output each. So we're going to take each of these constant combinators and wire it into this arithmetic combinator. The output, for now, I'm going to tie to this pole. So what this will do is it will take each of these inputs and multiply it by negative 1, giving us a negative input. So let's start with red transport belt. Let's request 200. Now if we look at this pole, we get a negative 200 on it. Well, what we can do here is actually upgrade these chests to storage chests. And then we can set a logistics filter on that chest for the item that we want to store in it. Then from there, I can tie in the circuit network to each of these chests and arms. Okay, so the factory then turns off. Well, what I want to do is go ahead and come to these inserters and say that if the transport belt is less than zero, and this one is if red transport belt is less than zero, this one will be if steel chest is less than zero. So what this will do is it will count how many items are in this chest. Currently we have 730 red transport belt. So 730 added to the negative 200 and we get a signal of 730. So right now, I'm sorry, we have 930 in this transport belt, in this uh, chest. 930. So 930 plus the negative 200, we get a signal of 730. So what happens if we want to request, say, a thousand of these? Then we just input it. It will bring this number up to a thousand and then it'll stop crafting. This is really useful because say that I am walking and I have all this yellow transport belt here, I can now dump it into the logistics system and the bots will then take it and store it with the rest of the yellow transport belt, which will then get upgraded into red transport belt. But the problem is, is that currently, if I do take all the yellow transport belt, it's not going to make any more red transport belt for us because it doesn't have any more. So to fix that, I have the second arithmetic combinator here. What I like to do is I like to take a, another constant combinator, and this is going to be my... Um, basically the bare minimum that I want my factory to create. Uh, so I use this for items that take or, or like go into get upgraded into stuff. For instance, uh, assembly machines. These assembly machine threes take assembly machine twos. So I'd use this constant combinator for that. I can put it as yellow transport belt and just leave it at a one. And then I use this arithmetic combinator to tell to multiply it by a hundred. I'm sorry, I'm not yellow transport belt, we need to set this to each, and then output each of the signals. Then I take this constant combinator, tie it to this arithmetic combinator, and take the arithmetic combinator and tie it into the old one. So what this will do is it'll multiply each signal by 100, and then if I want to add a bare minimum of something, I just need to input it, like that. And then it'll make the bare minimum of 100. So now this factory will just keep 100 transport belts stocked and it'll stop crafting. 
If I then throw in my yellow transport belt, the bots will store it with this and it can further get upgraded. So right now, this is not actually crafting any steel chests. We have to make sure to go in here and set how many steel chests we want to keep in stock. Let's keep five. And now this will craft it until there are five chests in the network. Pretty useful. Another thing that we can do with this is control our fluids. So if we come over here, let's go ahead and take some wire with us. and we tie this into our fluids, we can currently see that we have 10,000 uh, sulfuric acid, 50 petroleum, 24,000 heavy oil, and 24,000 lubricant. In the last episode, we set this up so that it was only pumping out into our refineries if lubricant was over a certain amount. But instead, what we want to do is we want to set this to lubricant is greater than zero. So what it will do is if our signal here is set to keep 100 lubricant stocked, it will then put negative 100 lubricant and every lubricant in this will add to that. And once it goes over that amount, it will then pump out into our refineries. Currently, we're not requesting any lubricant, so this is just pumping out freely. However, if we do want to keep a certain amount of lubricant stocked, let's say 50,000, which we cannot store in this tank, it will then stop pumping. We can do that with the same way with the light oil. We can say light oil is greater than zero. Right now we don't have any signal for the light oil, so it is always greater than zero. Because any amount of light oil that is in this tank is greater than zero. So let's come over here and let's set a bare minimum that we want to keep. Let's say 10,000. If we come back, the pump then stops pumping until the tank reaches 10,000 and it keeps it stable at 10,000. We can do the same thing with our sulfuric acid input, however, because it's an input, we want to make sure that it's less than zero. It will only input if this is less than zero, and that will keep it stocked at 10,000 too. Let's, uh, not 10,000, let's, uh, let's set it to 5,000. So this will keep the sulfuric acid stocked at 5,000. And then we can set the output, if we so desire, to be greater than 5,000. So we can say light oil is greater than zero. And now it'll keep this tank stocked at 5,000. So that's kind of how you can control your fluids. What if we want an indicator light in our base that is telling us which, which fluids are low or high? Well, we can set up some lights for that. Let's set up one light for every tank. We got five. So we'll set up five lights. We'll put that there, and we'll just give it a decider combinator on each of these lights. In this decider combinator, we will check the parameters of each of the fluids. So this top one can be lubricant. This, the next one down can be heavy oil. This can be light oil. This can be petroleum. And then this can be sulfuric acid. And then what I want to do is I want to set what parameter this light turns on. So let's make a red light come on if the sulfuric acid is less than negative 100. So that means that if we are not creating enough sulfuric acid, it will then make 100 of it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> if we're not creating enough sulfuric acid and it dips below what our maximum setting is, then this light will turn red. So we just need to set this red signal on each of these. Then all I need to do is tie each one into its respective light and tie each of them together and then tie it to our main circuit network. Then each of these lights we need to set enable if red is greater than zero and we need to use colors. So now what will happen is it will turn red if we are hitting above our mark. The problem is, is with these infinity pumps, they kind of flicker back and forth. You don't typically have this in your normal production. So if I turn off this pump here, 
and we allow the sulfuric acid to build up to the amount that we're requesting, we can see that the light comes off. But if I turn the pump off and then pump all the sulfuric acid out, we can see that the light turns red, which is showing us that we're short on sulfuric acid. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those so they don't flash at us. But that's how you would send up, set up an indicator of how your uh, like how low your oils and all that stuff is. There's a lot of other stuff that you can do with that, uh, this setup, but I'll let you play with it. Before we go, I want to show an example base. Uh, this is the one that I make on Twitch and show how I implemented this into my base. Now before we take a look at this factory, I want to have a little disclaimer. We are in the middle of transporting our base from early game spaghetti into late game main bus. So bear in mind that this base looks horrible right now. <laughs> So uh, this is our main bus that we're trying to build, but as we go further into the factory, we'll see that things are kind of messy because we're in the middle of renovating it. So looking here, this is how I have set up my circuit network to control my base. If we look at all these constant combinators, these are the bare minimums that I request of all my resources. So I keep 16 reactors stocked. All of this stuff is what I would use in a reactor setup. I keep 50 of all the requester chests stocked and all these train stops, train signals, all this stuff, I just keep stocked to a minimum. And then if I come into my mall here, I just have each of these wired in the same way that we showed. So right now I have 230 steel chest stocked. But say that I want to keep a little bit more steel chest stocked than 200. All I need to do is go ahead and upgrade this to 300. I then get more chests. Let's drop it back down to 100. Nope, not a thousand, a hundred. Then, if I take these chests out of here, it will start crafting more. And if I drop them into my logistics network, then my bots will pick them up and store them with the rest of the chests, which will cause this to stop crafting. And I have the same idea set up with the fluids. So these will output red if my fluids don't meet my minimum requirements. Right now, lubricant's been struggling because of my belt build. So if I come over to my fluids, I have set this up the same way that I set it up in that test world. I have my lubricant set to only pull into the lubricant tank if it is less than zero. And I have my light oil set up to only pump into the refineries if my light oil is greater than or equal to zero. So we can see here that it's keeping my light oil steady at 10,000. I also have my light oil only pumping in if it's less than zero. My heavy oil, on the other hand, will go into these machines making lubricant. And if the heavy oil is greater than the zero number, which I currently have it set at 1000, it will crack any extra heavy oil. So lubricant gets prioritized, and then after that, it cracks any extra heavy oil that is going down that pipe. But if this backs up, let's go ahead and disable this pump, that means that all the heavy oil can now get cracked but we will no longer make any lubricant. It'll take a minute for this pipe to actually back up and stop making the lubricant though. But that's how you would make your base a little bit smarter. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let's uh, go ahead and turn this back on before I forget about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check me out on Twitch. The link is in the description as well as in the bottom left hand corner of this video. And you can see me fix all this spaghetti. Ugh.